<laughs> hey yo, where my 80s and 90s babies at? Man, I know y'all know what's coming, right? I know y'all know what's coming. <laughs> Ooh boy. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm ready to take my flow back Y'all gon' get your dome crack Psycho bring that flow crack Everybody knows that This is for the people to show me that they believe in me Deep in the scene I'm the bigger than he the beastly beat Child of the 80s Banking on longevity Settle beef with anyone who's stepping up to test with me Top of track at copping that I can't hear the copycat 20 years, 10 deals Haters must acknowledge that Hey guys, Cody here, and today I'm going to be doing something new with the channel outside of reviews. I also want to start something called 90s Talk, and in a few moments you guys are going to be hearing a little podcast that I did earlier today uh, with my friend Kenneth, and it's my first attempt to do a podcast about a topic about the 90s, and today we're going to be talking about Pokemon. <laughs> Originally a card game turned RPG, the video game Pokemon became a huge success, or what was called Pocket Monsters in Japan. They decided to do a TV show, which later ported over into America. Pokemon later came to the States. I was a big fan of it as soon as it hit WB Kids, and I immediately started picking up the toys, the video games, you name it. There wasn't a school in the world you couldn't go to and then have kids handing out Pokemon cards and having Pokemon battles with. It was just one of those things that you see once in a lifetime. And, well, back when I was a kid, there were only 150 Pokemon. Kids today will never know this experience, and hopefully one day there's something just like this that can come out, but and them have the same experience, but I highly doubt it. Pokemon was one of a once-in-a-lifetime hit-or-miss TV shows, and it definitely lived to its expectations. Hey guys, this is Cody here with my friend Kenneth, or Kenny, whatever you want to call him. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! Oh! <laughs> well, if you, well, hey, that's better than Barbie and Ken. <laughs> okay, so today's topic's about Pokemon, of course. Um, gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all, yep, that's right. I think that's, that's outdated now. For a fucking year. Yeah, I think it's outdated now. <laughs> gotta catch them all. It was like the slogan for like the first three seasons, and then it just stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because Nintendo and whoever makes that cartoon realize, yeah, if they're going to do this, they're going to be here for a while. <laughs> well, I, I mean, and considering that there's pushing 800 species now. Yeah, I back when we were kids, it was always 150, or what people argue is 151 ever since the first movie came out, but. 152 if you feel like adding and missing out. <laughs> yeah. See, he knows he knows more about Pokemon now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he's... For those of you who watched the top of the fourth wall, the entity. Yes. Yeah. So, what we, uh, what I do is I only watch things from the 90s, so that didn't go any further than po maybe the Orange League, or the Orange Islands. So, um, well, actually, that was an early 2000s, wasn't it? Yeah, because the Indigo League, I think, ran from, they aired that, including reruns, I think, from 98 to through 99, then, then the Orange Islands, which is not about pure filler, was from 99 to 2000, and then it went to Johto, and then on, and on, and on, and on, and on, and somehow Ash is still 10 years old. I stopped at, um, at the Johto League. Uh, I don't think it got any better after that. I mean, people enjoyed the Johto League. Uh, I mean, that was around the time that the Nintendo 64 came out with their silver and gold promotion, huh? In Pokemon Stadium, yeah. Yeah. Well, well you know, I think Johto is also where a lot of people just kind of stopped because Johto just dragged for like... Okay, the Indigo League was, I think, one season, but the Johto League ended up being stretched into like two or three, and basically it was like what I... What I put on a couple of groups I'm in on 
Facebook about Transformers 4 afterwards, you just need a fucking nap. Exactly. <laughs> that was a three hour movie. <laughs> No, yeah, okay. it's a bit on the meaty side. Yeah, well, the thing is, is back in the 90s, when this stuff started, it was kind of, I think it was kind of competing with Digimon, too, wasn't it? Uh, Fox Kids had their own version of the That's anime, cool. which was Yu-Gi-Oh! and Digimon, and then Pokemon was its own anime on WB Kids. Okay, here's the thing. Yu-Gi-Oh! was also on Kids WB, so... Oh, was it really? Huh. So, even though... Okay, Pokemon was one of the many anime to help propel anime here in America. The other one being Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. Yeah. But Fox Kids had Digimon, which they would push other shows like Godzilla aside to have constant Digimon marathons every single Saturday. They just to drive the point home. We are better than Pokemon. And I hear Digimon is not doing so well. I didn't enjoy Digimon as much as I did Pokemon because it was Pokemon was a card game, same as Yu-Gi-Oh. Everybody had the damn cards when we were kids, right? Nobody knew how to play, but nobody cared. What were those damn little fish or like those things you put in your fish bowls? Those little like uh, uh, plastic orb things? You know what I'm talking the damage about? Damage counters. Yes. Oh my god. I would literally take because when I lose them, I would take them out of my fish bowl. Just because there was some, some kind of purpose to the game. But really, this is how I played Pokemon. I would shove it in people's face that I had uh, cards that were then like considered rare, like Mewtwo. <laughs> I would like sit there and say, hey, look, I got Mewtwo. What do you got? And are I got like... About the, are, you, are you talking about the movie exclusive Mewtwo or that big friggin' three foot tall card? No, it's the movie exclusive one, and I don't think anybody really cared the difference. All they knew it was mute. It was Mewtwo. Same thing with Blue Eyes White Dragon with Yu Gi Oh. It was one of those things. You like, you, you either had it, you were the top, you were the kid. You were kind of like that kid from uh, the movie, uh, the uh, the movie The Wizard, uh, the kid that had the power glove. <laughs> that was what you he felt wasn't like. When he said it was bad. Was, but not in a good way. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, no. Uh, what anyway, uh, I think we tried a bit. So, uh, how, 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 was you, how was that where you introduced Pokemon? Oh, I, by the way, people, if you hear some crunching, I'm chewing on a brown sugar cinnamon. <laughs> I was introduced so, to yeah, Pokemon. I was introduced to Pokemon because, well, okay, we were kids. We watched kids' shows. It was always Nickelodeon. Or Fox Kids, WB Kids, or you know, just there was not that many shows to choose from as kids like there is now. So, um, um, um I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to correct you. Nowadays, I've tried looking kids shows, or what would be considered kids shows. I've even tried watching a few. I tried watching Adventure Time. I just couldn't get into it. Regular show, I couldn't get into it. It bored me. And I look at things like the Amazing World of Gumball, and I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> that other, was nothing other, like... Other shows aimed at it. Aimed at I, I, I see I what you mean. Stupid, but we're getting a little off track here. I see what you mean. Well, either way, I was introduced just because I had the idiot box in front of my face, so... <laughs> Uh, he, and that and my cousin, he was more into it than I was, and he had all the cards, all the toys, he had the damn Pokedex, and I stole it from him. If he's watching this, he now knows that I stole it from him. So, <laughs> I think he's been asking, he's been asking that question for like the longest time, where the hell did my Pokedex ever go? And, I have no idea. <laughs> well, this one I got for Christmas. <laughs> but it, it, his name's, uh, Bo, so, you know, if it says Bo on, in Sharpie on it, it, it Santa Claus actually wrote it out to me. <laughs> so, no, the thing is, is I was introduced to Pokemon through the television, just like anybody else was. So, um, I mean, I mean, you always had those kids at school that brought Pokemon cards, which is not allowed anymore, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't allowed back then either. It was like, if you got caught, that was like, oh my god. They considered it gambling. Oh, they, they considered it a gambling thing. I don't know where that came from, but Yu-Gi-Oh! was perfectly allowed, and Yu-Gi-Oh! had the pictures of demons. Oh, well, yeah, that. I mean, uh, childhood memories, right? <laughs> no. Well, okay, let me ask you this. What was your favorite episode from, like, the first season of Pokemon? Hmm. There's only 76 episodes to choose from, Kenneth. <laughs> that is a very tough one. I could 
couldn't name any right off the bat, but recently, a couple months ago, I was watching, I was kind of binge watching on PokemonEpisodes.org, but I stopped after the ghost made me speak because I got off my Pokemon high and I was playing Pokemon X. Mm -hmm. I have level 80 Pikachu because, well, Pikachu. Yeah. And of those episodes, I think the ones where they're on the ship, the St. Anne. Ah, the shipwreck episode. Right, right, yeah, right, at, right after they fight, right after they have their fight with Lieutenant Surge and his Raichu, which that just screams the Ex Machina. Pikachu grabs himself with his tail. Yeah, I don't um, think it works like. like I think that, guys. my but, favorite. But yeah, where Team, but yeah, where Team Rocket leads that full scale attack on the ship. Right. The ship ends up sinking. They end up stuck under the water. They escape onto the island of the giant Pokemon, which leads into Tentacle and Tentacruel, which is an episode that I always wanted to watch as a kid, and now I'm like, uh, that wasn't as good as I was expecting. There was a gap between that the, episode and then the next and then episode, of which... The, yeah, and then of course the very controversial episode, the Beauty and the Beast. That's the one I'm talking you know, about. With, with, yeah, the one that was... I, I think it might have been aired on TV once, and it's, then they're like, yeah, that's a little too risque. For the ones that know, don't know what he's talking about, there was an episode which was dubbed in English. People seem to be confused that it never was. And it was. It was. There was the infamous James Has Boobs episode, which was called Beauty in the Beach. Now, there's another episode that was banned pretty much all around. Which was called the, uh, um, Sol was it Soldier Porygon or something like that? Okay, there was another episode, I forget what it was called, which involved the Safari Zone Warden, who constantly threatened everybody with a gun. Ah! And ended up putting in Ash's face <laughs> once. And then there was Electric Soldier Porygon, which... Uh, seizures! Which, I understand, gave, like, 500 kids in Japan seizures, was forced Pokemon off the air in Japan for a, four or five months. And it's never seen circulation again. And not right. even in the state. Well, those episodes are on YouTube now. So for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, they actually have... I don't think they're dubbed in English, though. I I haven't... I actually looked for these yesterday. No. They do not have them in English. I think that's, like, the rarest thing you can look for <laughs> in Pokemon. So... But, yeah, back to the whole introduction thing. I think while I was... While I, while my mother still was in Delaware, I still was with my father at the time. I was down visiting her at a friend's place, and he had a Game Boy, and I was playing Pokemon, but I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know what it was. So, eh, whatever. I go back to my, go back home, back up here to Pennsylvania, turn on the TV to turn on a Monday morning, I think, turn on the Kids WB, because I'm expecting War in the World of Charm in San Diego. And the first, very first episode of Pokemon I ever watched was the fight with Lieutenant Surge. Oh man, that now that that episode was classic. But you know what my favorite episode was? I would actually, I actually remember begging my mother for the VHS tape for this because Pikachu, Pikachu was the mascot for Pokemon. I loved the episode uh, Pikachu's Goodbye. I saw that coming right when you said Pikachu. It, I don't so, know why. It's just when it was one of those like, well. Could he really abandon Pikachu? And, and then the sad music. You remember the music that they played for that? It's the same music they played when he said bye bye Butterfree. Mm. Oh my and god. Literally, yes, that was better because in bye bye Butterfree, while he was given that rousing speech, he did have the sad music. You'd expect the sad music to continue to play as Butterfree's flying away. They played the, they played the upbeat Pokemon theme. It's like, this, what? Yeah. No, 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 no. Play something. I don't know, but don't play this. Yeah, I think Pokemon, there were some traumatic things as children. Uh, God, I don't remember what episode it was. It could have probably been a later episode. But it was the episode that you were talking about earlier was the shipwreck episode. And then they, the Officer Jenny was doing the memorial service. And they didn't even say yeah. that they survived at first. They just well, went... As far, well, as far as Officer Jenny and that new... Nobody survived, and after they get out of the ship, it seems like Jesse, James, and Meowth are dead. They're actually about to give them a burial at sea, and then they pop up like, yeah, we're not dead, bitch. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I, was, sorry, I, think sorry, I, was... I had to throw that in because for some reason the word bitch makes everything funny. I don't know what it is. This is I mean, I think we're old enough to realize that we're not children anymore. We know what curse words are. <laughs> we don't sit there and, ha ha, you said ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, the thing is, is I remember that episode a little bit more than I should have, and uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, the part where Jesse and James come out of the water and look like they're zombies. That scared me. <laughs> I, as a kid, that was like a really traumatic thing for me. I don't remember. I don't know why, but um, I think for me, it was, oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you can go ahead. I think I'm done now. <laughs> I think for me, when, when I was a little kid, one of the episode that both scared me but also made me laugh was Terror Tower. You know, the one where they meet the ghost Pokemon and actually get you have a near-death experience and actually become ghosts. Ah. Uh, no, I actually thought they actually died there for some well, reason. Well, considering that they have a giant fucking chandelier fall on top of them and then electrocute them and then Hunter pulls their souls right out of their body. Which never made no sense was when it electrocuted them. God, Pikachu's a freaking electric mouse. You think I always considered after we saw the episode for Lieutenant Surge, he absorbs electricity through his cheeks. Uh, I don't get it. What you would think. It, it, it's it's a it's a show that doesn't have any kind of like continuity to it, I guess. But another favorite episode of mine was the episode where uh, Duplica and Ditto. I don't remember what the episode uh, was called. Yeah. Um. I forget what it was called either, but, you know, you know, you know I, I don't know if this has ever been confirmed or not, but there's a fan theory floating around out there, you probably know this one, that Ditto is like the, the remnants of the genetic experiments used to recreate Mew, and thus create YouTube. Really? Like, the genetic runoff, that's a fan theory. I know, I'm like, not really on Pokemon, the Pokemon like, boards as much as I am with, yeah. you know. Well, well, I, I, well, I just heard this through the grapevine of videos on YouTube, not on any Pokemon forums. Another one is the reason Ash is perpetually 10 years old is because he, this is a coma, to, it's because this is a dream he's having while he's in a coma after the events of the very first episode. Another one is, he's dead. Okay, this is... <laughs> Wow, fan theories are hilarious, while some of them are probably stupid. <laughs> but I've never heard the, that before. Yeah, yeah. About the official reason given by Nintendo and Game Freak and whatever is why he's continually 10 is because they're trying to keep him to the age of the target audience. Why are the so Simpsons? That, why are the Simpsons still the age they are after 20 years? I have no idea. Exactly. It's it's something you don't age cartoon characters people <laughs> you don't why, why are the kids from south park still only in fourth grade exactly it's a that question going on for, and that's just going on for 18 years guys people do not like change that's why <laughs> see what happens i forget what video it is i forget what video it is but i shall direct you to the one that says your video where he's thrashing around the floor screaming i don't want change i don't want change <laughs> exactly see this is what happens when you elect a president that promises change. We get it, and people hate it. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, politics aside. <laughs> exactly, that's a joke. No, okay, okay, this is going to be a hard question, because I know it was hard for me to think about. What was your favorite Pokemon merchandise, or like, toy, or something along the lines that was Pokemon, besides the cards, and the games, of course? Is I that? had quite a few Pokemon plushies. One of the plushies, one of them was a coffee that you could unzip, fold, fold inside out, and became a Pokeball. Ah. I had that one, Pikachu, Mew, and they not only were they plushies, but they were keychains. I would when I was a little kid, I would I would always have, like have them in my bed with me, and I'd always have like have them cover me, and I would wake up and there'd be like Pikachu on my shoulder, Mew on my chest, coughing right next to my head. Hmm. Uh, there is, and, uh, and then of course those big ass Pokeballs from Burger King with the oh man, you were and you were you were the whatnot. You were the big kid on the block if you had those the Burger King uh, gold plated cards. Yeah, the memory. Yeah, yeah with Tiggly so. Pikachu, Mewtwo, Togepi. Mm -hmm. oh, man, and I need to get those back. <laughs> <laughs> and let me see here. Then there were the keychain toys with Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander, Pikachu, Jigglypuff. Yeah. I think I might have had a. I think I might have had a Voltorb at one time, which is kind of odd considering he's already a Pokeball with eyes. I think what they did with the they did that the keychains. They also did plushies, and they did um, what were tops, like little tops you spin on the table. 
I have. I think I, ha I, think I had a sand slash and a gold of that. I have a ditto. Like right now, I still have the Pokeball and all as a ditto. I cannot see ditto at the top. He's a blob. I'm gonna take a picture of it so you can see it as a top. That sounds hilarious. No, my favorite product, and I think you saw when I posted about it yesterday, I am actually fixing to obtain it again, was a board game called Pokemon Master Trainer. You know what I'm talking about? It's... Uh, I don't think so. There was a... a but, that, but do you remember this Pokemon puzzle that had all 150 Pokemon on it with, like, the evolutionary chains? I don't think I remember that, no. I don't... I mean, I had, I had that one. It took me and my dad, I think, almost a week to put it together. By the time we were done, we made it a poster and stuck it up on my wall. <laughs> now, this board game I'm talking about actually is... It has the whole uh, Indigo Plateau. And basically, it has all 150 Pokemon put... Or, they had indent indentions inside of it. And you put these tokens upside down. They had the Pokeballs. And you flipped them over. It had the Pokemon inside of it. Um... Hang on just a second. So anyway, I just had to go get food from downstairs. So anyway, I was talking about a board game. Uh, yeah. They had, like I said, tokens. He flipped upside down. They had Pokeball on one side and the other side. They had a Pokemon with their power levels and everything. Um, your goal was to go all the way through the Indigo pa Plateau battle gym leaders, and you were able to catch legendary Pokemon, too. Like Mewtwo, uh -huh. Mew, Lugia, all of them. So... Lugia, you wasn't introduced to Kyoto. That's what's weird about it. <laughs> they had uh, and Lugia and the three Moltres, Zapdos, and uh, Articuno. Oh. So. Okay. Um... But yeah, it was a cool board game, and I just recently was able to get it in the a trade. The thing to a Pokemon board game I had was that Pokemon Stadium board game thing where it had like Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander, and was electronic, and came with a Pokédex and all that stuff. Right. Speaking of Pokédexes, I don't think uh, we've ever... <laughs> remember Tiger Electronics' version of Poke the Pokédex I was talking about earlier? Um, it, was, it was like a digital calculator, uh, like the way the calculators work. Had its own animation. Sadly, yeah, sadly, the only Pokédex I ever had was the one from Pokemon, that Pokemon Stadium board game, and it never fucking worked. Really? Well, I'm, my friend says he got one, because the UK got the same stuff as we did, and he has one that he sent, he's sending me right now. I should be getting that, like, soon. So I wanted to do a video on that. Is this and... the same guy who, is this the same guy who got you the complete Goosebumps series and Stan Lee's autograph? Same guy that got me everything you know I have. <laughs> and the ability to catch a legendary war ahead of everyone else, which I cut a little bit in your video, and I'm going to assume you didn't like it. We'll talk about that episode at some other point. And while you were gone, I was thinking of this. What is the weirdest Pokemon you've ever seen? For me, it would have to be Vanilla from Generation 5. I've, is that the ice cream cone? I just want to eat it. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> All I ever heard about was that damn ice cream cum Pokemon everybody talking about. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? We didn't have that when we were a kid. Okay. I, I look at it, and I'm like, now I want some ice cream. Here, okay, as out. far as as the original 150, the weirdest one, based on its attack, would be Magikarp. The only good thing that came out of it, which sadly was the uh, almost the death of them at the end of... Uh, Here it is. It was, yeah, Gyarados was the only bad thing about, uh, or, well, it's a good thing, it's because he powers up, but he's also bad when you piss him off. Which, considering how short temper that guy has, yeah. Uh, okay, let's, you, let's again, step, you blame him? let's step decades a little bit, because I know, still, back around, I know, as far as I went with Pokemon and Silver, remember in the Silver Edition, the Red Gyarados? He wasn't just in Silver, he was in every Kyoto edition. He's even in, he's still even in Heart Gold Soul Sewer. Is he really? He Holy crap, you learn something every day. This kid is why you must push your boundaries past certain seasons to learn everything. And yes, that was the introduction of the shiny Pokemon, but you, but he doesn't count as a shiny because everybody has him. 
I never thought anything could be as powerful as Mew or Mewtwo or Lugia, but that in itself, they had Celebi. I remember Celebi, but somebody told me something. Alien? Huh? Celebi, was it Celebi? Yeah, he was the time-traveling alien thing. I he think. was the time-traveling... He looked like a... He was a plant Pokemon. That was like the first time I've ever seen a legendary plant Pokemon. Oh, so. but just wait until you... Oh, well... This, this, this Don't even happen. get me into know, any wait, other seasons. I was going to say, wait until you learn about God. Wait until you learn about Pokemon God. One silent for a minute. Hang on. I thought someone was calling my name. Anyway, this podcast has gone interesting for about 30 minutes almost. <laughs> Podcasting, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so I've always uh, wanted to know, um, because I can't ever think this by myself. I had every single one of them. Best version of the original Pokemon game, blue, red, or yellow? Considering it took me fucking ever to get past Brock and Yellow, I'm gonna to have to say Red. Because I got it for Christmas in 2000, and I already had a complete save file that whoever had it before me had all 150 Pokemon, they were all at level 100. You know what my trick was to get past Brock? It's because you couldn't get any water Pokemon in Pewter City. So you I went get a, towards. Get a, get a Mankey and grind. Uh, no, you get a Mankey and you evolve him into a Primeape. By battling shit tons of Pokemon in grass areas, it takes forever. It's the grind. Yeah, and grind. you, yeah. So that's that was my that was my trick too. Um, and I think the hardest one was beating. Uh, God, what was or getting out of that damn t- uh, cave was the hardest part of Yellow for me. You know which one? Say what now? Not moon. No, not, no, 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 no. The one before you enter uh, the uh, the uh, God the final part of the game where you fight Lance and Victory Road. Yeah. Yeah, Victory Road is a bitch. Especially but when yeah, you. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm you what? Go ahead. I was going to say I was this once. I was probably one of the few stupid kids who think who, who were playing playing against Brock and Pokemon Yellow. He sent out to you, dude. Hmm, I'm just going to do like Pikachu. Do- oh wait, I can't turn on this. <laughs> shit. Yeah, your Pikachu would be your most powerful Pokemon in your uh, your ar- like your arsenal, I guess is what I'm gonna call it. And being this Brock, you'd sit there and battle everybody before Brock and whoop everybody's ass with Pikachu. But as a kid. You would have to understand that electric didn't, Pokemon didn't work with Brock types. But re- really pisses me off in the TV show, they showed that it does. Somehow. Oh. Somehow. Somehow. Well, hey, well, hey, on the bright side, if it didn't work, at least Ash got one hell of a workout. You know what was funny is Ash always got it easy. Like, for the first season, he got everything handed to him. And he was still the hero out of the whole thing. <laughs> I think the only badge he won. I think the only badge he won legitimately was the Thunder Badge. True, that's true. Uh, I mean, I'm standing to him as a sign of friendship because. I think you're. Yeah, it's like, oh hey, you did this good thing. Here you go. No, I remember. Oh, hey, you taught me the value of friendship. Here you go. Yeah, exactly. Well, in the TV show, Surge. Um, I hated him. I really did. He seemed like a really bad Arnold Schwarzenegger ripoff. <laughs> I, I couldn't even get past how bad he was. He was calling everybody baby. Well, if you look at him, well, if you look, well, if you look at him in the games, he kind of looks like Guile in Street Fighter, and as we all know, Guile theme does with everything. Yeah. Uh, but the point where, where this one. One commentary group from Subscribe to Brain Scratch, and they've done Pokemon Yellow, Crystal, and Leaf Green. Every time we send, it, every time there's an electrode, they play Guile's theme. You know what's the funny? Guile's theme goes with everything. Electrode or yeah. uh, Voltorb and Electrode are like the most pointless Pokemon ever. They are good in some cases. Keep on with I. No, it's not just that. The fact that they can explode kill the opponent, but also kill themselves, it's helping promote suicide. 
you seen that one video where? Have you seen that one video where the trainer forces the? I think it's the electrode to blow itself up, and the electrode just says, "I don't want to do anything like that. I don't care. Blow yourself up." Yeah. What was that one episode? Uh, it was like full of like um, traps. I don't remember. It was the episode where Ash had a. The Fusion City episode. They were like. The one, where the, the one where they kept running into the invisible walls. The yeah. Four fell out from under them. Ash almost fell to his death like five. You know how many five times five they've all four. fall to their. They, they, kept, all... they kept stepping on ball towards. Yeah, you know it was funny. Every time they could, like every time they would walk a rickety bridge, they'd all fall. You think they die? And Brock always fell the funniest way. <laughs> That's another question I got. What's your favorite Brock moment? I think we you lost. You cut out there for a second. I said, what's your favorite Brock moment? I'm not sure. My, okay, let me start with mine first. Mine was when he was uh, on St. Anne. And he's sitting there saying, "You want to?" Uh, he's got his, his eyes on that guy that Ash battled, uh, his little girlfriend, and he's you know, got that red face and that droopy mouth. And he says, well, "How about a trade?" And Brock goes, "Yeah, everybody should trade. Let's do a trade." <laughs> it's, it's just funny well, how now that we're you know now that we're older, I could be construed in so many different ways. <laughs> I, I there was I one. Think about it, that guy was one big walking double time truck. Exactly. There was one episode. I don't remember what it was. Oh, it was the School of Hard Knocks. And uh, that kid showed, uh, which, uh, why does he have a picture of her? That's creepy. Anyway, there was a picture he showed them, and he's like, it's a girl. And he's like, he goes something along the lines. Over a woman. Yeah. There was the, I don't remember what Brock uh, said. The girl t- I don't know, but that, but like I said, the only time that, that as far as I can remember, Ash has fallen over a girl, and to be perfectly honest, I don't even think she was that cute. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember what Brock said in that episode. It was something along the lines of, she can, uh, she can, um, pun it, or it was along the lines of something, like she could, uh, teach me a lesson any day, or something like that. I don't remember, it was, it was a, yeah, a double entendre. <laughs> It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, when you're kids, you just laugh at them for being goofy and dorky. But when you get older, like for me, I want to compare them to something, but I don't know if anyone listening or watching or whatever you want to follow will probably get the reference. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. My favorite anime is an anime called Inuyasha. It's set in feudal Japan. One of the characters is a monk, but he has a bad habit of going around grabbing girls' butts. And constantly asking them to have his kids. It's, uh, yeah, Brock's kind of a very mild version of that, just without all the touchy touchy. I, I kind of was gonna compare him to Dragon Ball Z's, uh, master, uh, Roshi. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was gonna compare him to. There's always a pervert in the anime. Dirty old man. <laughs> Except Brock wasn't an old man, he was a teenager. <laughs> Which is funny is because you felt sorry for him in the first episode you saw him in was he's raising his brothers and sisters. And basically abandoned by his dad. His, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, oh my god, I just noticed your uh, your profile picture on Skype. We'll have to talk about that series too. At some point. Um Oh, you're, oh, yeah, I was going to say, wait, wait, I forget what, oh, yeah, with Godzilla. Yeah, we'd have to talk about that. that however you want to call it. We'd talk about that, the movie and the animated TV show. But, uh, basically, all we're trying to say is that we're trying to talk about our favorite moments of Pokemon, and it just kind of went off topic. It was my first attempt at a podcast. But, you know, the funny thing is, is the 90s was about so many different topics you can compare them to everything of that time like pokemon was like digimon or something from pokemon was like dragon ball z it was just weird isn't it it's like its own well, genre well, well, back then, well, well yeah back then considering the anime was still in its infancy here in the states it it really wasn't uncommon to compare pokemon and dragon ball z to each other 
at least in terms of the art style and whatnot, and of course Pokemon Digimon had that whole thing going on. Nowadays, the hardcore fans are like, you compare their Pokemon and Digimon, you must be crucified and burned at the stake. And then there's ah. some people that would like to see a Pokemon Digimon death match. <laughs> like, well, who would win in that anyway? Well, let's see here. <laughs> I have no idea. Here's a better question. On the Great Mystery of Life, isn't it? Digimon was just a digital, a digital, uh, like, world. Pokemon was its own, like, uh, it, like, Pokemon was its own world, Di um, and then you had... I know where you're going with it. And then you also had Yu-Gi-Oh!, which was just basically spirit monsters. So, I don't know how that would work. <laughs> you know, for a second, I thought you were going to say what happens to the Pokemon when they're put the file transfer system that's a good question that's a good question i i get uh, that now there's this guy on there's this guy on youtube the uh, jay witz i think that was a topic of one of his videos pokemon or digimon <laughs> i can't really say that one or the other would win because digimon fast evolved pokemon were slow with it unless you used a freaking stone which we could yeah, make a stone. Also, we could make a stone joke if we have to. <laughs> you have to get stone to evolve. Now let's reserve that. One. No, you know what? No, let's reserve that for Mario because there's a bit. Because there's a scene from the, from this video of one of my favorite viewers. Some call me Johnny when he reviewed Super Mario Brothers Three that I want to show you sometime. <laughs> oh, but, let's see here. What was I going to say? Oh yeah. Where, where, whereas Pokemon evolutions are permanent, Digimon they're digivolutions. Yeah, the thing was Digi. And Pokey. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know what was the but, biggest thing in the 90s everybody talked about? Everything was named Turbo. You're not going Turbo. Oh, are you, Ralph? <laughs> no. We'd have to talk about this at some other point, but everybody, I remember seeing Nostalgia Critic talk, talk about, or no, was it Nostalgia Critic or AVGN, saying that everything of that time... Thermographic Power Rangers Turbo, Turbo this, Turbo that, Turbo Man, Street Fighter Turbo. <laughs> yep, <laughs> basically. And, and, okay, the, the next thing we'll talk about Pokemon-wise, we'll end it here. Po uh, the best part thing about Pokemon, of course, is a TV show, but, of course... We can't talk, not talk about the video games, and I, I remember the biggest thing about Pokemon games was, and it was the attachment, which was the link cable. And we'd always argue about which Pokemon we had and which one we wanted to trade. Ah, <laughs> uh, the, the good times. <laughs> the good times. The more innocent wanted, times. Nobody wanted to get rid of their Charizard, but nobody wanted to get rid of their Charizard and everybody who had a Pikachu never wanted to get rid of it because there was like a, there was like a one in twenty chance of coming across that thing, which equates to a five percent chance in the entire game. At the time when Pokemon games were out, it was always it always seemed like everybody had better Pokemon than you and you wanted them, but they'd never give it up. They would offer a really shitty Pokemon for one of your better Pokemon. I remember one guy taught me how to copy Pokemon. You remember that? Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, the only time I can think where you gotta do Pokemon out of a trade in the game was in the Johto era. Hey, I have an Onyx. You wanna trade it for... You wanna... You wanna give me a Bellsprout for it? Here's my Bellsprout, now give me your Onyx. <laughs> No, I remember somebody talking about how how you could copy Pokemon. Do you remember that? I don't think so. I remember someone did that for me because he had a Mewtwo. And you had to have a link cable to do it. But there was some kind of cheat that you put in at the Pokemon Center, at the computer where you would sit there and trade out your po the Pokemon you have in the system. There were, I don't remember what how you did it, but you were able to copy your Pokemon. And he had a Mewtwo that was at level 100. He never, he didn't want to give it up, but he said he'd copy it for me so he can give it to me, and he did. I was like, well, holy shit, I have Mewtwo. <laughs> so. I'm not 
never heard of that. I took it to school the next day because literally where I'd play po my Pokemon game was like at my local baseball field because we have baseball games and stuff like that. So I'd sit instead of watching the game, I'd sit there with other kids that had Game Boys and stuff and other people who had link cables. Everybody, everybody. Yeah, well, there's literally crap tons of kids that play Pokemon. You couldn't go anywhere in schools or out on public property and not have someone with Pokemon cards or a Game Boy game, you know? That's what's so fun about this topic that's is... Kind of what, that's kind of what... Go yeah. ahead. Uh, in 2000, the later part of 2012, September... Johnny on YouTube, someone called me Johnny, he did his month of Pokemon as part of a bet with the, another guy from his commentary group, Brain Scratch, Ted. The bet was, if Ted could beat the original Legend of Zelda without cheating, then Johnny would give him a month to po Pokemon, which he, in which he reviews Generation 1, Stadium, Snap, the card game, and Generation 2. He wanted to go into Hey You Pikachu, but decided not to. <laughs> I see why. <laughs> In generation in generation one, it was he started off with Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon. You cannot go anywhere without seeing this all over the goddamn place. It's true. It really is true. It, I was in a small town too, so I don't know what it was like in bigger oh, towns. Oh. Like I can't even imagine what it would have been like if you were living in like this the like city and being able to walk to public parks that were like two miles from each other and sit there and say. Oh, oh. Yeah, hey, play Pokemon? <laughs> exactly, that's what you always do. You'd never sit there and ride well, bikes. I can't even go past how how much I miss the the way that we were when we were kids. Yeah, really, kids these days don't know what it was like. But, see, that was the, kind of how a big Pokemon was, because Johnny's from Philadelphia. And here's another example of how big Pokemon was. He had a Kangaskhan card. He traded it for Metal Gear Solid on the PS1. Damn. He got into Metal Gear Solid thanks to Pokemon. There's some cards. Which I've heard so many people Metal talking Solid about. Play and during the Pokemon coverage. I've heard so many yeah, people this, talk. Yeah. I've heard so many people talking about one card that people always talk about in Pokemon, which is the uh, the shiny Charizard. Holographic Charizard. Yeah. Is it really that rare? Really that rare? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I remember Smosh During making his, fun of it, uh, making fun of it in one of their videos, and it being like someone charging almost a hundred dollars for it. It's just like, is it really that rare? Because I used to have one, and I want to kick myself. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't Pokemon in real life, was it? Charizard, here, here, learn and fly. Like Charizard cannot learn fly. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Johnny he's brought in another guy. Continue. I, I was I was talking about this with my cousin a while back, and how we wish that we can go back in time to our childhoods because I think the biggest thing in our childhoods, influence wise, was Star Wars, Pokemon, and Power Rangers. Those were the three things that we grew up with, and Pokemon more so. I think I had everything Pokemon when I was a kid. Um, oh hey, look. Oh, hey, look, the TARDIS. I'm just going to hop in here go back to 1995. We're, we're just jumping yeah. different franchises in this video. <laughs> I, could, I, I, could, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. But, yeah, uh, third his Pokemon trading card game review, which was more of a retrospective between Johnny, his best friend Matt, his, Johnny's younger brother, Elliot, and another commentator for Brain Scratch, Ryan, who had... Uh, holographic Charizard, three ancient views, a Japanese Heracross, a Japanese Umbreon, and like an entire entire stack full of like 50 holographic and shinies. He also had a tutorial for the game and whatnot. Where was I going with this? I, I forget where I was going with this, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> He's shameless plugging. Oh, oh yeah, that's oh yeah, that's right, Ryan. Pop shot. Holographic Charizard card. You were the envy of the playground if you had this thing. I got three of these ancient Mews, and they're all from the movie. What the hell? Oh my god, are you talking about that one that was kind of like a holograph, like a um, or a, 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 a hieroglyphic? I don't even know why I said holographic. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm tired or something. A hieroglyphic. Yes, I've heard so many people say that is the worst card ever. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Elliot, at one point in the video, showed off that, that fake Mewtwo card I, I brought up earlier. He showed that off, that he got from the movie promote, as a promotion for the first movie. It's so big that it is banned in tournaments. <laughs> oh, I can only that, imagine. That thing, is, that thing is like 8 inches wide and 12 inches tall, and it's like, what the hell? Can you imagine someone playing that in a game? It's like, hey, what is that big thing you got wrapped behind you? It's like, Here, you pay I, no I, attention I to that. My it's like, pay no I attention to pay. Pay no attention to it, because you're fixing to get your ass whooped, and he plays some shitty-ass Pokemon. Okay, I play Meow. Okay. Somebody get the crane. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Magic card, I choose you. It only knows how to flop. It's the king of card. Yeah. Magic card. I know what somebody keeps on making Magikarp memes, or memes, um, uh, Magikarp we used Splash and it was super effective. <laughs> That's funny. I read across that meme and I was like, well, that would be the day, wouldn't it? Uh, I got a question for you, because you would know this. Is there is there an even more useless Pokemon than Magikarp now that there's, like, thousands of them? There is... Almost 750 different species of Pokemon. I cannot determine a worst kind of Pokemon, but from my experience, Magikarp is not the worst considering what it turns into. So, yeah, it kind of gets past No, I'm just but saying the most up. pointless one. The yeah, Magikarp being the one that could only has, has one attack. <laughs> Unknown. Uh, oh, true. That, what was it, Teleport that he used or something? There's 26, di there's 26 different variations of unknown, each one based off a letter of the alphabet, and the only attack they know is hidden power, which does little to no damage at all. Why was that damn thing so threatening in the movie, then? <laughs> because apparently they made Entei. Okay, and then. I don't even remember. Something about being in tune to the little girl's emotions or something like that. And because she was so emotionally distraught losing her parents, she almost... Blew up the world or some crap like that. Why does it the movies always go darker and angrier than the show? What the hell? I got one last entry to talk about before I end this because it's almost pushing 50 minutes. Um, I remember when there was talk of a live action Pokemon movie, but it turned out to be a flock. Or a fluke. If, if you go onto YouTube, look up. It's called a Pokelips. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So many people considered that to be legit. How, however, however, as far as I'm aware, they only did that as a joke. All that exists is that trailer. They have not pursued it. They need to they do a fan put it film up as a joke. They yeah, should. I, th I think it was. I think it was mainly to test the the guy. Video editing skills or something like that. I don't know. He he surpassed his video play. editing skills. But yeah, a live action Pokemon. Huh? Work as just as much as a live action SpongeBob would. Good night, everybody. <laughs> what a way to leave. Bring it up live action. Spongebob. That just goes... Ooh. That'd be creepy. I haven't crossed myself this much since I played... I, I haven't crossed myself this much since I played Fatal Flame. <laughs> Alright guys, I think we're going to end that here. I didn't really want to push it more than an hour and we're almost there, so um, thanks Kenneth for, you know, joining in. I'm pretty sure he's going to join in on other things, so... Oh, no problem. Oh, assuming, I'm, assuming I'm able to. You have no life. You have no life, Kiddeth. You can't say you're a busy person. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> well, cons well, considering that I go to school, and then I help my dad out in the garage as a wood he's a wood factor, and <laughs> my mother just sleeps, so I'm kind of having to be as smart as I can. I know. Not. I have more of a no life than he does, guys. I sit here and collect toys and movies for a living. But I have a reason. <laughs> It's to entertain. Hey, I do commentary over video games. Hey, I do commentary over video games, and I've gotten back into doing reviews. Okay, the last review I put up was, believe it or not, over a couple of My Little Pony figures. 
Oh my god. Yes, guys, this guy this guy is a brony, too, so let's add on other things that he should not be right now. <laughs> Pushing that aside, hmm? may I make a suggestion? Sure. The next topic? Yeah, let's make a suggestion so we can... That will work, okay? We'll probably do this before Halloween. In, in light of the movie coming out in August. Let's do a topic on Goosebumps next time. It seems like it could be a little bit more interesting than what we had to offer for Pokemon. So, uh, thanks, Kenneth, again. And uh, I'll maybe next week we'll do this on Goosebumps. So, I'll talk to you guys, guys later.